what up? Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. Today I want to talk to you about pain patterns. I found it very interesting. I've been doing this for 12, 13 years. And a lot of the times people have specific pain patterns in their body. Whether it's behind the knee, the knee, the hip, the back, the shoulder. And a lot of the times people coming to us from all over the world saying, you know, I've, I have a shoulder problem, it's an impingement, but I've worked with these therapists, physical therapists, Gary Gray people, all these people, and no one really can get to the root of the issue because they still have pain. And they've done all these crazy exercises. Well, we got to start thinking outside the box. And I was actually introduced to this by Paul Check back in maybe 2004. And it really caught my attention and it got my love for the body. And it really got me excited because if we start really looking at the body from the inside out, we can really get a better idea of where these patterns are probably coming from. So we've got to think about this. Now, if you study the work of Pottinger and Symptoms of Visceral Disease, it's a great book, really heavy read, deep read. I mean, it took me years to honestly read this book. It's very technical, but it's a great book. It should be in everyone's library. And you know I love books, so it's one of my favorites. But Paul Check introduced this to me in 2003. Now, if you think about this, and Pottinger talks about this in his book, you have sensory and motor pathways. Motor pathways, I can move my arm. Sensory, I touch something hot, I know it's hot, right? So sensory motor pathways. Sensory dictates motor patterns. That's why we, how we actually develop as infants through sensory input and desire. And this is really important. But if we look at the body, we've got muscles, we'll simplify it, muscles and organs. Muscles have sensory motor pathways, right? I can go to touch something hot, sensory. If it's hot, I pull away motor, right? So sensory motor pathways. Same thing with walking, anything. Well, organs are a little bit different. Pondra talks about how organs actually share sensory pathways with muscles. So they have a motor pathway. You know, your organs actually expand and retract, and they actually move in specific planes of motion, whether it's flex and extension, internal, external rotation. They actually move upon respiration. They have a motility to them, a life, a vitality. But they actually share sensory pathways with muscles. And this is quite interesting. It caught my attention. So when you have pain, how do you know that it's actually a muscle and not an organ. Now, with human beings, and most of us actually, when we have pain, we think it's muscle, we think it's fascia, we think it's bone. We don't think anything deeper than that. But what if I said a lot of the pain patterns that we see in people are actually coming from organ origin or the root of the problem? Now, if we look at some of these pathways, this is pretty technical stuff, so I have a lot of my notes here, to just give you some insight into where some of these pain patterns are coming from. Now, if we look at the lungs, Pottinger, this is all based off Pottinger's work. Pottinger showed that the lungs are innervated from T1 to T5-ish. Like and they actually refer, so you have what's called a, a, a visceral to visceral reflex, visceral organ to organ reflex, a visceral somatic reflex, visceral to muscle. You have a somatic to somatic reflex, which is muscle to muscle, and somatic to visceral reflex, somatic to organ reflex. So we're really looking at a visceral somatic reflex with these, organ to muscle reflex. So the lungs actually refer to across the upper part of your body here, through the back part of your body, and the uh, lower cervical spine from C3 to C7. That's where the lungs actually refer to if there's any type of restriction, uh, inflammation, uh, things like that. The diaphragm, or I should say, let's back up a little, the pleura of the lung that surrounds the lung is actually innervated from T1 down to T12, but it actually refers to the chest from here down to the bottom aspect, let's say, of the ribs, the xiphoid process. You have the colon. The colon is innervated from T9 to L3, and the colon, or the large intestine, we could say, actually refers to the right side of the inguinal area of your pelvic area basically from the pubis to the ASIS, everywhere in between that area and slightly into the inguinal region. You have the stomach. The stomach is innervated from T5 to T9, and he showed that a lot of people that have inflammation in the colon, the hypochlorhydric, actually get atrophy in those muscles from T5 to T9. But the stomach actually refers to right here below the xiphoid process in a circle area, viscerosomatically. He also talks about the pancreas. The pancreas is innervated from T5 to T9 as well. And the pancreas actually refers to the same area, just a little bit bigger, a little bit lower, down to basically the top of the belly button, as well as the mid-thoracic area, the posterior part of the body. Basically, we could say from T7, T8 to about T12 area. You have the spleen. The spleen is innervated, once again, from T5 to T9. And the spleen actually refers to the left side of the body, um, exactly rib area, I don't know, but basically below the nipple area in a circle region right here. 
we could say kind of above uh, the spleen, the pancreas, things like that. You have the heart, and everyone knows the heart. What happens when someone's going to have a heart attack? They get a reflex in the chest area down the left arm. That's a viscerosomatic reflex from the heart. That's the only one everyone focuses on, but every organ has a viscerosomatic reflex. If we look at the small intestine, the small intestine is innervated from T5 to T9. You're seeing a lot of them are innervated from T5 to T9. And this got me thinking with a lot of people years ago because people have atrophy, wing scapula, pain in that region, knots, that nothing fixes. And a lot of the time, it has to do with inflammation or subluxation of those vertebrae or something going on, affecting innervation to the stomach, creating hypochlorhydria, inflammation, downregulation, creating a visceral somatic reflex. The stomach actually refers to right around the belly button region or the umbilicus. You have the bladder. The bladder is innervated from T, uh, T11 to like L3 area, low, more low in the lumbar spine or mid lumbar spine. It actually refers to the pubis area and below the pubis as well as the... Um, like the sacral area and right below in the gluteal cleft area, which is like that fold in your butt. That's what the bladder refers to. And a lot of people that have pubis pain or pubic pain to bone lower down near the genitals, upon palpation, a lot of times it has to do with the bladder because the bladder is actually suspended through a ligament called the iracus ligament that actually attaches to the pubis. And you have the pubis, the ligament, the bladder, uterus or prostate, and rectum, and then sacrum. So whatever happens in there can affect the sacrum as well as the pubis. You have the kidneys. The kidneys are innervated from T10 down to L1. And typically they refer from above the belly button, right above the belly button, all the way down to like mid um, uh, thigh area um, on the front of the body as well as the posterior part of the body. You have the uterus, which actually is innervated from T10 to L4. And that actually refers to the inguinal area and the medial aspect of the leg where your adductors are. You have the testicles, which are innervated from T10 to L4, and those refer right above the pubic area or the pubic bone. You have the ovaries, which are innervated from T10 to L4, and they refer to right beside the belly button on both sides. You have the prostate, which is innervated from T10 to T11, as well as S1 to S3, and that actually refers to right across, like a belt across the belly button line, front and back of the body, as well as the glute area and the back of the body all the way to the knee, that medial aspect of the upper part of the leg and the calves and the feet. You have the uterus, which is innervated from T10 to L4, and you see people or women with a lot of PMS and issues going on in those areas. This actually reflexes to the breasts and from the belly button all the way down to the feet, the entire lower extremity. That's where you can see dysfunction if there's inflammation or dysfunction in that organ in that area. Last one is the liver. The liver actually refers to or is innervated by T5 to T9, and it refers to the right shoulder, the right area where the liver is, and the right knee and popliteal fossa, which is behind the knee. So I know that's a little bit, a lot of information to go into, but my whole key point of doing this is to realize that if you have pain patterns, it could be the origin of the viscera. It could be a fascia restriction, a motility dysfunction. It could be a physiological issue. It could be a ligamentous restriction. So you have to think about how do we look deeper into the problem to see maybe it's really not a muscle. Maybe I have shoulder pain, but maybe it's actually coming from my liver. Now, I'm not saying you have liver cancer or something's wrong with you. It could be a fascia restriction. It could be a connection ligamentously, like I talked about the bladder. And you see this a lot in women when they have chronic PMS and inflammation, what happens? They get pubic pain, they get inguinal pain, they get knee pain, they get sacroiliac pain, ankle pain, and that's because of a viscerosomatic reflex. So hopefully you've learned something today. Hopefully you can look at this deeper. You can study the work of Pottinger. You can go get some work done by a visceral massage therapist that's schooled through the Upledger Institute. Find a skilled osteopath that's trained in doing visceral work to work on these restrictions and assess them to see if your pain patterns are coming from visceral or origin. Thanks for tuning in, and I'm out of here.